So we start with prayer each time, and this is connecting with God about things he cares about. So some ideas for prayer, you can simply finish a sentence. God, one thing I'm still trying to figure out about you is, or you can fill in the blank. God, help me to receive your love or mercy or grace today, whatever word you want to put there. God, produce your fruit of the spirit in me, and the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. You can pick one of those to focus on. Or simply pray a specific scripture or verse, if that's what you would like to do, or even ask God a question about any of his scripture or verses. The second thing we do is go, doing good wherever you are. So some ways to serve where you are, send an encouraging text message, post a positive comment on social media, write a thank you note, call someone to brag on them or to brag on somebody else to them, do a chore for a family member so they don't have to do it later. Come up with your own creative idea of a way, a quick way to serve someone else and to bless them. Go ahead and pause and do that now. Our third aspect is baptize, uniting with Jesus in new life. Baptize someone if you want to and you have the opportunity to do so, you certainly can do that. If not, then just share how God is impacting your life or share what you're learning about God. If you want to find other stories of people sharing stories about God's impact on their lives, you can go to a website called I Am Second and check out that. Go ahead and pause the video and do one of those things now. The fourth aspect is teach. This is really learning how to follow Jesus way of love. And this is the bulk of what the message in the video is about now. So our lesson this week is who do you think you are? John 1, 19 through 34. So last time, if you're going in order, we looked at John 1 and we looked at the beginning part of this passage, 19 through 23. But now I encourage you to find a Bible and to read this whole section, John 1, 19 through 34. This time, I am going to actually take the opportunity to read the passage to you as it appears on the screen. But you can also pause the video and read it for yourself. So let's go through it little section at a time. Starts in verse 19. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. So that's the section we really looked at in our last lesson. But then it keeps going, picking it up in verse 24. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. <clears throat> they asked him, then why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know, even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. Verse 29, the next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he who, of whom I said, after me comes a man who ranks before me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose, I came baptizing with water that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the spirit descend from heaven like a dove and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he on whom you see the spirit descend and remain. This is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have borne witness that this is the Son of God. So before we dig into any specific part of this, pause the video and take time as a group, if you're with other people or on your own to reflect, on noticings and wonderings. So this is something we will do occasionally with lessons, is take a section of scripture and just ask the question, what do you notice? What did you observe? What were your takeaways? And then also, what do you wonder? What questions do you have? So what do you notice and wonder about this section of scripture? Pause the video and consider that. All 
All right, so let's dig into a certain part of this, starting in the verse 24 and verse 25. In verse 25, it says, they asked him then, why are you baptizing if you are neither the Christ nor Elijah nor the prophet? It's interesting that we call him John the Baptist because we call him that because he was John the Baptist or John the baptizer. He was baptizing people. And so we take it for granted that that's just what he did. But the amazing, incredible part in this whole section of scripture is that John was baptizing in the first place. And so he was questioned and challenged for doing so. He did not fit in the box as one of the authorized people to baptize. He is not, you know, quote unquote, anointed to do so because he's not the Christ. He's not the Messiah. And he's already established that he's not Elijah or a prophet. So this is one of the reasons it was so important for him to establish who he was not in the previous lesson, that he's not all of these others. It squarely puts him outside of the box of approved vendors for baptism, if you will. And yet he is baptizing. That's really the extraordinary part of the story that we don't really necessarily grasp. Now, he did clarify that he baptizes with water. He does not baptize with the spirit. So he's still clarifying for people who he is not. By the way, if you want to dig into this some more, um, the parallel passages are in Matthew 3 and Mark chapter 1 that have this story in there as well. So the question initially posed was, why do you baptize if you are not these people? In other words, what gives you the right? What gives you the authority to bypass our system, to do it this way, to step outside of our structure for doing this. And his answer is God. John says that God sent him to baptize with water in verse 33. Jesus came to John to be baptized by him. This is such a powerful, powerful, incredible moment as we see that God ordains the ordinary, and maybe not even just the ordinary, but the weird or unexpected. He sets aside an entire religious system in the opening chapters of the Gospels. So here's a question for you to consider. Why do you think Jesus picked John to baptize him? All right, if you did not pause the video to discuss that one, then make sure you do so now. The next question, also pause the video and consider this with, with your group. What do you see as the meaning of baptism? And what is required to be able to baptize someone? All right, we have one more question for you to discuss and reflect on. So pause the video and consider this question. Come up with your own question for discussion or share which part of this passage impacted you the most. All right, that brings us to our bye-bye blessing. <laughs> share something that someone else said or did that impacted you during this time. And as you share that with them, you will bless them in return. And as always, act with grace and simplify faith. Have a great day.